Hi everyone, Zach here. We're gonna do some ice fishing today. Try to give you as much information as possible on what I do to kind of gear up. It's supposed to get into the um, upper 40s. So this is one of our bigger warmups that we've had so far. So I'm trying to get out on the ice before it all melts. I think we have a good chance to catch some big pike and some big bass. So I'm gonna start off with these waterproof knee-high boots. On a typical day of ice fishing, I would wear one of these large body suits. I'm not taking this today, but I just wanted to show that because that would be something I would have on a regular day. Today, I am going to start off with a pair of thermal underwear, and that'll go on first along with some wool socks. Uh, for headgear, I'll have a light face mask over top of the thermal wear. I like to wear these fleece lined pants. The upper body, I'm gonna wear just a light hoodie and a good old trusty hooded Carhartt. And that'll be my outfit. Um, dressing in layers like this kind of allows me to strip down if I get too warm out there or get uncomfortable or kind of layer back up. This is usually what I end up with after an ice fishing adventure, just a bucket full of rods that are all tangled up from the last adventure. So I just wanna go through and I'm going to actually take the time to switch out all my lures now. So I'm ready for the ice and just check the, the line, especially the last few feet of the line. You always wanna check that for any frays or um, you know anything like that. The, the last thing you want is to hook into that, you know, monster fish and you know, it snap off just because of a simple nick. This is a long pair of pliers. They're made by uh, Rapala. They have this little kind of hook here at the end so you can really grip your hooks and a pair of nail cutters to cut all your lines. This is also good to cut through braid. With ice fishing or any type of fishing, I feel like you always need a pair of pliers or you always need something to cut your line with and you just never have them available to you. Here we are. This is what you see during last ice. You get a little open water towards the edge. Hopefully it's solid enough that once I get out there, we can do some fishing today. All right, here I am. Safety first, rope tied to my waist. It's time for me to walk the plank. And uh, I got my drill here. See what we're cooking with out there. Always bring a buddy. Sam on the camera, he's gonna pull me in if I fall through. <laughs> got your back, Zach. Always check your ice, people. Especially during the thaw. So you got about three inches of the soft ice. This is snow that kind of fell, freezes. But from here, down to here. Got about that Plenty. much Plenty. solid ice. Plenty. So check your solid ice versus your soft ice, especially on last ice. Because all this shit is just snow you can really feel it when you're using your auger you cut through this like butter this other stuff is the more solid stuff will be a little harder on your auger i like to be at least like four inches typically unless if it's shallow water or something i've fished on a lot sketchier ice than this so i'm comfortable being out here and at least i got a rope i'm fortunate for sam there's only one rope so <laughs> and i have all the electronics <laughs> <laughs> all right that's it i'm getting out the gas auger now and I'm gonna punch a whole bunch of holes. This is kind of the edge of the drop-off, and that's what I'm going for. I'm gonna drill a whole bunch of holes along the edge of the drop-off, then I'm gonna to go to either side of the drop-off, into the deeper water, into the shallow water. And uh, we're gonna set our tip-ups right on the drop-off. The um, deep water and the shallow water is where we're gonna run our rattling baits to really try to get those pike coming up and checking out the area, wondering what that noise is, um, in hopes that they'll see one of our suckers and we'll get some flags out of it. This is what we use, or these are called tip-ups. Um, we're gonna set this in the hole here, put our flag down, fish pulls the, the lure, and the flag goes up. We know to catch it. We're using, uh, this rig is from Big Tooth Tackle, or I think it's called like a Big Tooth Rig. I highly recommend these over just a single shovel hook. When you go to hook these, you want to put one on one side. This is a sucker, a nice oily, 
um, bait. Pike just love these. They can't really can't avoid them if they see them. I put one on one side of the fish and come in on the other side here with this. And what I'm going to do is determine the depth of the pole now before I set my bait. So I go down to the bottom, reel this to the top of the water, pull this out. This looks roughly about you know 14 foot of water maybe. Um, I always take into account there's probably some weeds on the bottom. I want to be above the weed line so I'm going to set this about three feet off the bottom. So you just take that simply measured from there and set that up there. And there's my pole about three feet. This is where I want to be with the sucker. Drop it in, reel up your excess, set your plug down. Wait for the big one to come. So now we have our tip ups all set up with all these extra holes that I drilled. We're gonna go by with a couple of rattlers. We're trying different types here. These actually have like little beads in them, they rattle. And what that does is it creates a noise and vibration that will get some of the predator fish coming up to kind of investigate what that is. Hopefully they see one of our tasty little treats for them set up and they decide to have lunch with us. And we'll see if we can get some flags. Another awesome advantage to ice fishing, no need for a cooler. The whole damn lake's a cooler. It's beautiful, just beautiful. All right, we've been out there rattling them around for a little while, probably about 30 minutes. Haven't gotten any luck with that yet. So we decided to take a break, pop up the shanty here, get out of the wind um, and start fishing for some smaller panfish. Maybe we can catch a few bass or something in here. Um, I got these spikes. This is a type of live bait I like to attach to the end of a lot of my lures. I like these over grubs or uh, millworms because they have almost like a, uh, a skin casing on them where they really hang on the hook a little bit better. If you can see, I can kind of pull on this pretty hard and it won't rip off. It will eventually, but it's a lot harder to rip these off your hook for the little small fish that like to peck at them than it is like a wax worm. And we have our fish finder here going. <laughs> All right, we just got a flag up. Let's see what's happening. Nice bass. Probably about 15, 16 inch. But this is what I'm saying about these rigs I love. It really keeps them from getting those gullet. This bass would have probably been a goner if I had a single hook and a smaller uh, chub on here. Fires on the necklace. Always right where you need them. So that's the goal. Keep these guys alive. Hopefully just get the bait. Come on. Two dollars a piece at the bait store. Expensive dinner. But he's a little guy. Probably 14, 15 inch bass. But it's good we're getting some action. Got him. Slayer Sam over here. Can't keep him off the damn hook. Look at this. One after another. Be gentle with it. Swans are coming after me. Just trying to catch some fish here. I could take them. Yeah, I got them. <laughs> I wish I had my camera on. Yeah, that would have been perfect. That's a YouTube video, man. See what these guys have over here. You drink beer, yeah, for sure. It's part of the ice fishing. It's all in the video. Yeah, I was recording that hole because I had a flag as those swans came down on me. Could you hear us? We can't help it. When you're catching fish, you're like, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's what I was like. Someone's going out over here. 
I heard you guys hooting and hollering about those swans headed out for me. Now they're waiting for me to go to my shanty over there on the shore. They attacked him like last week. Oh really? They came after him? So I was like, there's your birds, Jimmy. <laughs> All right. This is where the crappie are. Mediocre, but he's decent. He's a mediocre, <laughs> man. No, he's not bad. He's not a thing. Nice. Woo! I'm using a wax worm and a teardrop. Orange. Okay. Do you like uh, blackberry uh, brandy? Uh, I'll try it. You got some? Oh, yeah. All right. Keep an eye on a spring bobber. Dude. All right. At least I'll have it on video so you can, your fishing story will be true. Uh, yeah, it's only had one sip on it. Go ahead. Take a shot. Thanks, man. It's like a jelly. You don't want This have is an essential. No, I don't think so. I won't put my lips on it. That is a nice fishing tradition right there. All right. I'll have to remember this. We started that this year, didn't we, Chad, old buddy? That's really good. He's my buddy, dude. That's if I, really good. If I ain't out here, he's bass backwards. If he ain't out here, I'm bass backwards, you know? It tastes kind of like uh, jelly almost like a cough syrup in a sense or something. Gone, dude. They took my worm that fast, dude. We weren't paying attention. God. Well, at least we were drinking brandy while it happened. <laughs> Thanks for the Look shot, at, man. Look at my teardrop, dude. It's completely empty. Stripped out. Well, at least you're keeping the fish well fed here. Yeah. That's always one more time. crucial. One more time. I'll put one more on. For the environment. I need to get my buddy back down here to, if these swans attack me as I'm leaving, because I got to get pretty close to them there. Dude, I didn't know what the hell was going on for a minute there. They both did a team circle right around you. <laughs> oh. All right, give me give me a little mess. Well, you might just have to leave because it's. Just, I'm bad luck. I'm just scaring them away. I gotta go check my flags anyway. All right, you guys have a good night, man. Catch them all. It's good talking to y'all. I gotta go see. I probably got three fish on over here. All right. <laughs> all right, take care. We'll come see you. All right, I'm not gonna be much longer. My buddy's got cold feet. He's in the truck already. So. Yeah, I told him to buy some decent boots. Yeah, he's got he's got his granny's boots on. All right, this one's been up for a minute, so we'll see. Oh, yeah. oh yeah, baby. Woo! That's a northern Woo! pike right there. Woo! 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 That's a northern pike, call that little duck bill. There's a lot of sharp teeth in his mouth. It's hard to see, but they're like little freaking razor blades. Try to get him back. He's been chewing on that thing for a while. Nothing massive, but definitely cool. I'm glad I got to show you guys this, um, this guy here. So it's hard to give you a good perspective of how big he is. It's getting kind of dark out here. I'll get him back in the water. 